far as a meat bar, so we mix like high quality animal proteins with fruits and nuts. We source on a model of anything from sustainable to restorative to regenerative. For a meat company, there's so much misinformation out there that animal protein is destructive and degenerative and so partnering with the Savory Institute, telling the story of the ranchers that we, you know, we're also doing business with, they eat our products and then they see the bigger mission that these products can actually restore or help heal soil and land. It was a couple of dairy farmers that are a little bit familiar with holistic management. About a week ago I said come and see how we're doing in this very dry spring because I knew from previous grazing seasons that people were going to be running out of pasture. What I didn't know was that many of these farmers were completely out of pasture at this point. And I noticed a couple of farmers go back up into the field where we had the cows. Afterward, they called and they said, we want to know more, we want to talk about a grazing plan. He, they said, did you know what we were doing up there? He said, no. And he said, we were digging down in the field and we wanted to see what you know was going on underneath the plants up there. And he, he said, it was unbelievable. It's the same base soil type that we share. And he knew that and he said, that doesn't look anything like he said My it looks soil. like potting soil. It looks like potting soil. What did you do? <laughs> All of our land is already degraded. You can kill the soil with a plow just as easy as you can with a chemical. Something has changed. 80% of all fabric and textiles hit landfill. We need to understand nature because we've forgotten. Holistic management opened up a huge door for us. The way of managing how long animals are in one place and when they return to it. My animals are my tool to make it grow, to make photosynthesis grow. The mortality rates decreased and people started living in peace. It's not for my betterment, it's for our betterment. Everything we do has an origin and an impact. We can create a beautiful and just world that we want to live in. If you had to bring it all down to one thing, it would just be that management needs to become holistic. Dairy production is basically a dairy production facility where um, you know dairy cows are actually calved. That initiates the lactation, and then they're they're put through a facility, so something like this, but usually they're much larger, <laughs> um, in order to uh, harvest the milk. And so their milk typically once, twice, usually three times a day, and then that milk goes into a bulk tank, and it's usually sold to a processor at that stage. So at that point in time, the dairy farmer is done with the milk. That's the traditional model. And then once the processor takes the milk, they're gonna pasteurize it, homogenize it, package it, and then put a label on it and put it into a distributorship. And the distributorship then will get that milk to a retailer. The retail dollar for that gallon of milk in the store, the farmer gets less than, something less than 20% of that retail dollar. I didn't grow up a farmer. I grew up in western New Jersey and for whatever reason when I was 13 wanted to be a farmer. After having uh, worked in a bunch of different corporate jobs, my wife and I bought a farm. We weren't sure what we were going to do with it. Decided a year later, well the only way we could leave, uh, I could leave my corporate job was to milk cows because milking cows gives you a regular paycheck. The problem is that the regular paycheck isn't big enough to leave your job. Uh, so we started thinking about organic, which we went certified organic in 2007, and at the same time grass-fed because we wanted to add value to the milk that we were producing with our cows and thought that that was the next logical step. Between conventional and organic, you, you can actually display the same nutrition profile in the milk. It's just a matter of how it was produced, whether it was organic or conventional. When you go to grass-fed, from a laboratory analysis, chemical standpoint, it is a definitively different product. We started out as pretty inexperienced dairy farmers, and uh, what we've learned has been just absolutely mind-blowing. We started out just family cows in a beef operation and had an opportunity to buy this place. 
and foolishly thought that, hey, you know, we're good grazers, we're doing awesome grass-finished beef, you know, we'll just graze some dairy cows. Who wouldn't like grass-fed dairy? We transitioned an organic herd to grass-fed, to 100% grass-fed, and found out how much we didn't know. <laughs> That's it. Grass-fed, we talk about it like it was, you know, you had to be an A-lister. You had to really be able to manage your farm. And then when we started to apply the planning from holistic management, it was like a marriage, Chris. It was perfect. It was like this is the piece that we were looking for. Holistic management is a body of knowledge that implements planning processes that help us manage the resources of the farm. The knowledge of four ecosystem processes, which are the mineral cycle, water cycle, energy flow, community dynamics. Holistic planned grazing is a set of calculations that takes into account previous carrying capacities and known approximate recovery rates so that we can provide a balanced and full ration for dairy cows on pasture alone, which is really critical for 100% grass-fed dairy. Soil is really the foundation of any solid farming operation, and it's been an undersung kind of uh, phenomenon, I think, in academic institutions. Um, as an animal scientist coming through the University of Illinois, I was not taught anything at all about soil, so I had to learn this all in retrospect. Managed intensive grazing systems where we're moving the cattle, allowing adequate rest for the plant physiology to completely recover is essential. We all know that manure is actually a resource to be managed. It's a probiotic for the soil and we need to use it as such. The animal impact is the other aspect that um, I've really grown an appreciation for that I hadn't really thought about. Breaking up the soil caps and allowing more cycling of water and cycling of nutrients down into the soil profile is a really key component. So I think livestock are essential. Otherwise, you don't have the cycling of nutrients that you need in these kinds of ecological systems. So when we work with farms, we view farms sort of on a informal continuum. You know, obviously you start on the conventional side and on the, the far far other side are, you know, like the, the uber grazing ultimate calf on cow dairy operation. And we're trying to move people along that continuum. And part of that uh, framework is holistic management and particularly starting with planned grazing because that's the foundation that you have to start from. Feed costs are a dairyman's biggest expenditure and they know that. Um, and if they have a pasture component to their farm already, then it's a really e easy conversation to broach because they know that when they take advantage of pasture, their profits go up. And right, you we talk about our numbers in that sense because there's a value for every day that the cows are on pasture in comparison to every day they're on feed. On this little farm, it's in the three to $400 a day. So it doesn't take very long to be real money. I think the other people that are starting to implement holistic management are finding that they their lives are, are easing up. The intensity is slowing and there's just a levity that is coming with the farmers that are starting to use these plans. One thing that I believe we have, and I'm very grateful for this, is that we have a strong level of commitment and faith, which I am also very grateful for Sarah Institute. We said, look guys, we have nothing. We don't know about farming. We are not farmers. We are not born to be farmers. We don't have money. We don't have land. The only thing we have is our commitment. And normally I would expect any institution, anybody, will say, well, you guys are nice, but come back when you got something. But instead, Savory Institute said, well, guys, that's what matters. So please join in. We want you in. We started with 18 sheep. Now we have 50. We started an egg business with 60 hens. Now we have around 200. We started with 14 goats. Now we have around 100. Job. No, <laughs> actually the herding part is not so uh, hard, but the milking part is hard. Really? That's why uh, yeah. people, if you don't milk it, you can't make money. How do you sell it? We pasteurize it and we turn it into cheese. Okay. We divided enterprises, so the first enterprise is the goat enterprise, and its product is the milk, which is 
put on the doorstep of the milk enterprise. The enterprise takes it and turns it into yogurt and pasteurized milk definitely, and cheese mostly nowadays. Well, where do you do that at? <laughs> We're building a new building. Wow. For that. And right now we have a small workshop. We don't realize how much resources you have. When you put your whole and context all together, you see, for instance, in our case, wow, we got really a lot of social resources. We got lots of, uh, I don't know, like, commitment and dedication. So how we can turn all this into a, you know, momentum where people, other young people especially, can join in so we can create a, a wheel turning and, and that's what we did. We are working a lot with young people, especially in the urban area and in the rural area. And we see that there is a huge demand from those people. Those people want a purpose in their life and they see that the current setting doesn't offer them that purpose. They want to heal the land, people, economy, life, the country and everything. Holistic management opened up a huge door for us. I know that I have to feed the soil in order to have clean air, clean water, and really some good food. We don't plow. We don't use fungicides, no herbicides, no pesticides. The plowing and all the interfering is simply killing that on your life. This here, all the poop, is their very first food. We're trying to get all these roots Come closer. It was important before how high the grass was. I'm seriously not interested with that ever. I'm very interested how bare of a soil I have because that means she's crying to me. The more together they are, the more I simply feed them here with organic manners. I know that she will hold uh, water and underground population will get to have their water and their nutrients through this manure. Yeah, so I'm after I'm after something very long term and I hope I live that long. We are now on our way to Tolga. He's a third generation farmer and he's already farming in north west of Turkey and he has been a conventional farmer uh, he was looking for a way to change the way he was doing stuff through using holistic management decision making framework he uh, is now having grass-fed uh, livestock and he does all this with holistic financial planning and holistic grazing uh, planning he has his context I really respect his work and one of the pioneers of our work on holistic management in Turkey. So Tolga, you were just telling me that for a year and a half, 18 months, exactly. all your heifers are completely grass-fed on the pasture plus the hay that you are harvesting from your pastures. Yes, of course, use this. 100%. Well, 100%. I, I think it's a really bold move because especially in Turkey, when the milk industry, milk prices are very problematic. And, but still, you, are, uh, you made this move and you are putting them just on grass fed until they give birth and become milking cows. And I mean, I'm not a cow expert, but they look really great, actually. Bütün kışı orada geçirdiler. Orada da bahsetmiştim sana, Karaçim diye yerli bir ot vardır. O çıktı. Kış süresince ben inanamadım. Yani kış süresince tam üç kez otladılar, üç kez yetişti o soğuk havalarda bile. Yani buranın yerel cinsi yerel değil. Cinsi. Yerel ve yabani sen tohumlamadın yani. Yok yok hiçbir şekilde ekim değil sadece kendinden çıkmayla. Hı hı. E, üç, ke üç kez otladılar yani döne döne. Ve evet. e, bütün kışı orada geçirdiler diyebilirim yani. So the soil recovers itself pretty quick when it's... Eskiden olsaydı şimdi bu düveler içeride olurlardı. Hı hı. Orası çıplak durdu bütün kış boyunca. Hı hı. Böyle bakardık ya bu hayvanlara ot bitti ne yapacağız diye ama. <gülüyor> ama orayı değerlendiler, gübrelediler ve şimdi gördüğün gibi biz ikinci ürünü ayçiğine ektik. Çok sağlıklı bir şekilde devam ediyor ayçiğe. When we talk with the farmers, we can just tell them. You know Tolga, he has been doing grain fat and now he's doing mostly grazed grass fat. And economically. Economically. <gülüyor> economically, <gülüyor> yes. Economically he has been great. 
So we're adding value by grass feeding the dairy cows, so there's no grain. So there's the grass-fed benefit. But in addition to that, we're also capturing part of the retail food dollar by becoming our own processor. So we're, we've developed a, a bottling plant that we're going to utilize to bottle our own milk. We've got a refrigerated trailer that we're going to be distributing that milk to local retailers that are interested in a grass-fed organic product in glass. So those are the ways that we're planning on trying to capture more of that retail dollar value here on farm so that we can stay in business as an 80 cow dairy. When we met Tim Joseph, who <laughs> runs Maple Hill Creamery, we got together in their kitchen, you know, we were like, we're gonna change, we're gonna revolutionize the dairy industry, man, <laughs> you know? But really, we were like the dog chasing the car, like, like you don't think you're gonna catch it, you know? You're just you might, out there. You're gonna get run over. You're gonna get run over, right? We yeah. were just a couple farmers that decided to, to just go for it, you know? So that was 2010 when we met them, and Tim's was just getting to the point where he couldn't really manage the uh, explosive growth of the creamery, and manage his own farm. So he started buying, so. I mean, buying milk from us in, in milk cans and then very quickly it moved to totes and then very quickly it moved to a truck and then very quickly he said, Paul, do you know anybody else as crazy as you and Phyllis are that will make milk with no grain and send it to me? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know, I think I know this guy. <laughs> I'll go talk to him. And that was John King an Amish farmer over here who was grass-fed uh, for the same reasons we are. And that was number two. And I think just last week, grass-fed farms, we crested 80. So yeah, it's very, very exciting. I, I just think it's, it's exciting to bring all the pieces together around regenerative agriculture and put a spotlight on that. Because in the end, um, obviously that's best for the land, but it's also actually the best for uh, farmers in that the soil is your lifeblood. And if you're not taking care of the soil, eventually you're gonna pay for it somewhere. And that's what's happening today in both conventional and organic agriculture. From a consumer standpoint, uh, grass-fed and regenerative agriculture checks boxes for every consumer, whatever it is they care about. You know, if you're not really that concerned with the soil, but you're, you care about animal welfare, uh, our, our system is in, an improvement for animal welfare. If you care about the soil, we've got that. If you care about farm families and, and their financial, we check that box. I always say, actually, if the product was not chemically different and nutritionally different, I would still be doing what I'm doing because on the back end of the system, it changes so much for the better that it's still the right thing to do. And luckily, it ends up producing a food product that is nutritionally superior for us to eat. So it's just a full circle. It's just a no-brainer.